I know a lot a lot of people who who just who write who do write for sync and they they're they're just in the volume business game again it's it's not about it's an added expense it's an added headache to go ahead and copyright everything that you do which may be you know three two two three hundred tracks a year you know what I mean like it's that's a lot of that's a lot of work to to that and maybe somebody will steal it you know what I mean so well and here's what I would say to to that right um is that as a part of your business plan, if you are planning this out correctly, you take 10 completed masters by the same grouping of authors and you pay $85. That's $8.50 per song. Mm-hmm. That's like buying a pack of strings, you know, and, and that's not an exorbitant expense when you plan for it. Now, the other the other side of the coin is, OK, so maybe you're not releasing music to the public. Maybe you're not mm-hmm. going to Spotify and maybe you're not going the artist path. You're going the sync path. And so you have two, three hundred songs and maybe they're not all songs. Or a lot of them are just instrumental cues or whatever right. you're creating. Uh, but what I would suggest is that once you do make a placement, that you take a certain percentage of that placement revenue uh, when you get the check and turn around mm-hmm. and copyright the stuff. Now, certainly the top ones that you would copyright are the ones that are now going to be on whatever Netflix right. series yeah. or or whatever. But it's just about planning your business. And that's one of the things that we go into with the music business mentorship is, yeah. is what's your end goal and how do you get there and how do you do it the the right way without wasting money on things you don't need to spend on? I wouldn't say that for someone who creates 500 pieces of music a year – that they need to go register every single one of them with the copyright office. Mm-hmm. However, if you are a, you know, achieving some degree of success in your music business, uh, or you are an artist where you're you're releasing, you know, ten tracks on an album every six eight months or mm-hmm. or once a year, then it's absolutely part of your process. It's right. got to be. It it just has to be. You have to register yeah. that stuff and it's just like having a mixing engineer and a mastering engineer and you know just it's part doing of it. it the right yeah, way exactly yeah. it's all part of it and one of the things that i was told super early on was one of the first people you want to look to hire is a music lawyer would you agree with that i think that a music lawyer is a fantastic asset for your team i think that as a music lawyer myself um I get into the role of manager quite frequently. And right. if you build a relationship with that person, then maybe they're not charging you for every single hour that you spend on the phone with them. Some, some will, and, and it, and it can be kind of a formal process. But I think when you have a mentor or an advisor, I mm-hmm. think when you build your team, you need to have mentors and advisors and certainly an experienced music lawyer is going to be a, a really key element to that team. Now, if you, if you have one that you don't have quite as close a relationship as I do with a lot of my clients, maybe, uh, you know, you pile up your questions and ask yeah. them all at once. But you definitely need to have one uh, at some point in your music career. And there's a lot of information that's out there that a music lawyer can help distill in a very fast fashion. Um, I mean, I right. can point you to all the books and all the all the podcasts and all the things that are explaining things. But if sure. you don't want to spend, you know, your whole life researching uh, maybe knowing who to go to to kind of distill that stuff could be an yeah. asset. 